All right, so we're just going to pick up where we left off. Now, um, I did take a minute to just correct a couple things. Because I'm working, kind of looking like across my drawing, um, and there's some foreshortening from my viewpoint, um, sometimes things that are farther away from me will seem like they are smaller than they actually look in my drawing. Um, I still think that maybe this ball is a little large, um, but I did pull these edges out and down. Now I didn't do any erasing at all. Um, I try to hold off on erasing as long as I can. Um, I'm at this point going to switch to a different pencil. Um, now a lot of times I will draw with a 4B at this stage, but I only have a 2B. So um, I mentioned that I had my mechanical pencil, um, the lead kind of pushed out a little bit. I have sharpened my pencil with an X-Acto knife and I have sharpened it into a longer point. Um, if you are accident prone, um, you might not want to do that, but nonetheless, um, it's a good idea so that you can draw with your graphite on its edge. Um, I just very slowly whittle it down and um, as long as you're careful and you go slowly and you know you just got to remember you always cut away from yourself and make sure that the blade is really tight. Um, okay so I'm just gonna move on to my 2B. Now um, my mechanical pencil was a number two pencil, um, which again is equivalent to an HB. So this pencil is just a little bit softer. Now, one thing that's starting to happen is I'm starting to get my hand a little bit in my drawing. So I'm just gonna put this piece of paper down and protect my paper. And I'm just drawing in a nice, circular motion. Now even on the highlight side I'm still adding a little bit of shading and I'm noticing that this base when I look over here is connecting just a little bit more than it is in my drawing so I'm going to adjust that. I'm just slowly adjusting. It's always easier to make things bigger in our drawings than smaller. Unless you have really gotten your contour too dark too fast, in which case sometimes um, it can be difficult to adjust your contour by extending your object outwards. Now um, I'm starting to build up some slightly darker values. I'm probably going to slightly exaggerate the value in this drawing um, just to kind of give you a sense of how that works and that's going to make this object appear even more sculptural. Um, I'm teaching you guys perspective drawing right now and in that project you are going to be making a scene of some type. Um, I'll be talking to you kind of about the parameters of that project. Um, I'm going to do an example of an extended perspective drawing using graphite and I have decided that I am going to do it based on a chess set for mine. Um, so I thought this would be a good segue into that. Um, and it's also, I think, a good next step from the very basic graphite shading that we did, shading a ball. As we're learning to draw, one of the things that is so important is to start really basic and then just keep increasing the level of difficulty little by little until you become comfortable. 
Now I'm really using pressure to adjust my value. But I'm trying to keep it really smooth and even. Because I'm drawing with my pencil on its edge, everything is staying very soft. And I'm not gonna stay in any one area too long. Sometimes when I'm drawing and really focusing on value, I might even let my eyes go slightly out of focus so that I'm able to just focus on those lights and darks um, without really paying any attention to any kind of surface detail. Now, because I didn't do any erasing, when I made my adjustments down here, I have some extra lines. So I just need to kind of be mindful about how I compensate for that. I could have just erased it out, but um, I think it's good practice to just kind of work our mistakes in as part of our process. Sometimes things that seem like mistakes can actually end up really helping you. And no matter what, I think so much of learning how to create art is learning to continually make those small adjustments. Now, because I had this rounded edge in here that I move down, I'm forced to shade it going in that same circular motion. But that's okay because that circular motion is just reinforcing the roundness of that ellipse. Okay, so down in here, I have to be careful because I really am going to need to start to go kind of a lot darker. And um, one of the things that I want to be sure to be careful with is that my point here is even with my point there. So I think what I'm going to do is take the edge of this piece of paper and line it up with the edge of my paper and then I can see if I have lined it up and I have. So where this edge, can't really see it in here, but it's right there. Where these two edges come together, it needs to be lined up. And then the lowest part of the curve is gonna be right where that center line is. And even if you can't really see the center line on your screen, Trust me, it is there. It's just very faint. A lot of times I'll leave the center line in my drawing and it just slowly dissolves as I go. Let's put the paper back under my hand. I know it seems like such a pain to draw with paper under your hand, but I learned that lesson the hard way. Sometimes I think one of the things that I'm doing while I'm teaching is just saving other people all the mistakes that I myself have made. And right on that edge, I'm actually gonna start to bring in just a little bit of definition I'm just gonna start to go really quick because I wanna finish this in the next five minutes, at least. That is my goal. We'll see how well I do. Oops, I just got a little stray line down there. Now, one of the things that is not so good is that I have 
this line still there so I actually am going to need to go in with my eraser um, now it's not so good that I'm using this pink one it's always good to have your eraser handy oh here's my white plastic eraser that's much better okay so um, now I'm going to switch to a slightly darker pencil um, so in terms of my darker pencil um, I do have um, a Sanford ebony um, but as you can see it is not sharpened um, I also have this which is just a graphite stick and I'm gonna use my graphite it's really more of a crayon than a stick I'm gonna use that um, just so that I don't spend any of my precious minutes sharpening my pencil and I'm just really paying attention to where I need to increase that darkness that is very important Now I'm not worried about defining my contour. That's um, a good thing to do using a harder graphite. Um, now softer graphite is good because you're gonna get those nice dark values, but harder graphite is good because it's gonna allow you to get a clean edge. And I'm just really going to start to darken this up. Now because this graphite crayon is so worn down, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it handles like a 6B, so I'm just going to take a guess that that's what it is. I don't want to spend too long on this shadow over here, but it's important that I get some of it. I don't want to, um, I want to be careful about the kind of marks that I'm starting to accumulate in my graphite using a 6B because those will tend to stay. Okay, now I'm going to go in with my, let's see, I'm going to go in with my 2B. And um, generally, I would probably be using like a really sharp 6B at this point. But um, one of the things that you'll notice is different brands of graphite are different darknesses, um, even in terms of the different numbers. So this is a Prismacolor graphite pencil. And the Prismacolor ones tend to just be a little bit darker. Something like an Artist Loft pencil um, just is a little more waxy and is not going to give you quite that same darkness. So even though this is just a 2B, I'm still getting fairly dark. Okay, so um, in terms of relating this back to the sphere, right now what I'm doing is I'm just really indicating the core shadow. Now of course there's reflected light and then up in here is the cast shadow and then we have the highlight that's contained within that form. Um, and voila! I think I'm gonna actually maybe do one more little session with this and just really make it really detailed. Um, so if you feel like watching that happen, just follow along. Okay, thanks guys!